Hey, again, everyone, it's Rob Ryder on uh, Saturday, May 1st, 2021. And today I want to talk about the proud boy, Mr. Patriot. He deserves justice, not pity. And then I'm putting everybody on notice that watches my videos. You need to understand this, especially if you're a proud boy who's now going to watch this video. Right, the Esquires are not patriots. They are crown agent belligerents. And in their nation, Mr. is below an Esquire. So we're dealing with this foreign entity, right, that's run by Esquires. Well, they've taken over the courts. So your proud boy friends that are in court are not in a court of the United States. They're in a court of people pretending to be a court of the United States. Esquires are actually crown agents, foreign to the United States, right? And in their nation, a mister is lower than an esquire, which is why they always want to call you a mister or a missus or whatever the terms are. I mean, this is, you can find this right out of Wikipedia. I'll show you in just a second, right? But it's a very important concept to realize from the very beginning. If you're going to an attorney to get justice, you're not going to get it. Because they're all Esquires. They're all members of the bar. To become a member of the bar, you have to give up your First Amendment uh, rights, basically. Because you lose your right to free speech. Right? Well, then that entity, the bar, is an organization that advocates the overthrow of our constitutional form of government because it doesn't want you to have one of the protections. And that's the people you're going to to try to get justice in these courts of, you know, black robe priests that are impersonating judges of the United States. So I'm going to let them explain their side of it. I'm just saying, well, I could easily prove, and I've had in the past, that they don't have the proper oath of office. You're not the judge that's in the Constitution. And, well, therefore, you're not a judge over me. Right? So... Uh, but, you know, but then, again, because there's gold fringe flags everywhere, well, it could be we're in a military jurisdiction already, and we need to be going to a different entity as our point to enter that jurisdiction than we already are. And that'd be for a different video. But anyways, this is where it starts, right? That Esquires are not patriots. They are crown agent belligerents, and in their nation, a mister is lower than an Esquire. And you can go find this right out of Wikipedia. I just put it on here. It's a little bit easier for me to read. That In the 19th century and earlier in Britain, two graduations of gentlemen were uh, recognized. The higher was entitled to use Esquire, usually abbreviated ESQ, which followed the name, and the lower employed Mr. before the name. Well, there you go, right? They have us Mr. Ritluski, and they're whatever their name is, with ESQ at the end. And uh, while well, we're going to go look at some, they're very easy to see once you know that that's, you know, look for the ESQ. Find out if you're, talk, if you're dealing with an Esquire. Uh, it goes on to say, though, that today, on post from Buckingham Palace, a man who is a U.K. citizen is addressed as an ESQ, and a man of a foreign nationality is addressed as a mister. That's exactly what we're dealing with. They're, they're from a foreign jurisdiction, from Buckingham Palace. And so we're foreign to them, and they address us as mister. Right? But when they write it, they put it, you know, with the mister in front. Well, that, in their, you know, in their English law system, would put you below an esquire, which means you don't have any rights. Right? Because this isn't a constitutional form of government in England. This was before the 19th century. Well, that'd be, you know, the, the common law under the uh, uh, on a, under a monarchy, right back where we were trying to leave in the first place. And that's all they did. They, you know, completed the circle, took us back in under the crown. And it's been going on ever since the Treaty of Peace, 1783, when uh, King George III said that he claimed the United States of America. And if you look at your passport, it says you're in the United States of America. It means you're in King George's jurisdiction. So what can we do about it? That's what you know. I'm all about it. So what are you going to do about it? And so first thing for me is, well, I'm not a mister. I'm Staff Sergeant Robert Antler-Rutluski. 
United States Army veteran. No, 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 no. You're not going to call me a mister. Fuck that. You know, if it's military mister, don't get me wrong, warrant officer. I get it. But no, not out here in this supposed civilian world. You're not going to call me a mister. And as I've shown, if you've ever served, you're still in. They, they never gave you the documents you need to be released from the military. We had to save that for different videos. Uh, but I go by Rob Ryder. That's my avatar. My email address is quarterrecord at AOL.com. Uh, there's my phone number. And I'm quite serious. If somebody knows the Proud Boys or the Oath Keepers or somebody, you know, in their in their hierarchy that wants to talk about this shit, I will lay it all out for them. Right? But until then, I'll just do a video on bits and pieces. And, uh, well, that's why people watch the videos. So let me see what I can show you. Give me just a minute here. So uh, hopefully I'm talking to somebody who was told, hey, you need to watch this video. Never watched any of my videos before. But if you were to go to Rob Ryder, R-O-B-B-B-R-Y-D-E-R on YouTube, you will see that, you know, this isn't my first video on things having to do with something to do with the way the government's run or whatever it would be. Um, you know, and I've been at it for quite some time. So... Uh, I wanted to point one out here. You know, another good one to watch after this is go watch this one on Newport News is an alien enemy belligerent. And I'll show you a case of a veteran who was uh, charged for kidnapping his own child, out of state, kidnapping, sent to jail. He was in jail almost eight months and had never been arraigned, let alone have a preliminary hearing. He never had an arraignment. They didn't do the arraignment until he signed the paperwork to agree to whatever the bullshit was he was being offered. And then he was arraigned eight months after being in jail to a veteran of the United States. Right? There's something wrong in America when that shit happens. And part of it is, well, that your state governor is an alien, unprivileged enemy belligerent. Right? I'll show you that uh, uh, what you can simply go and ask for the my freedom of information for the uh, oaths of your governors and you'll see they haven't taken the oaths that are necessary for them to be a governor of a state in the United States. You just have to watch, right? Or, you know, all, all these are really good. But it's just a lot to watch. I know you don't have that much time. So let's get on to things about uh, the Proud Boys. So hang on a sec. So recently, you know, Dominic... Pozzola, right? Proud boy from Rochester received PPP loan for his small business. Da, 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 da. Well, he just got picked up again. And uh, there's Dominic, right? And he's sitting in jail. Uh, I don't even know what where he's at jail at, but I know his court case is being heard in the District of Columbia. So, um, you know, it was easy enough to find online, and that's the guy's case I picked. But this could go to anybody. It isn't just Dominic they're doing this to. This case actually has two other guys involved, so all three of them are already have the same shit happening to them. But it happens in every court case. They did it. They did the shit to General Flynn, right? We're not dealing with courts in the United States. We're dealing with fucking esquires. They're crowd agents, right? They're enemies of the United States. They need to be arrested by the military, and that's. If ultimately, I hope that that's what we convince them of. Come on, military, get in there and wrestle all them fuckers, and let's get it over with. Excuse my French, but I'm really pissed off about this stuff. <sighs> Take a breath. I also noticed that the Proud Boys website is down. You know, so I can't contact them directly, or I would. I right? send them an email, but I don't have an email address. Does somebody know the email address to the Proud Boys? Right, send them an email, and please send me their email so I can send them an email. Right, but uh, you know, because what they're unfortunately, all these organizations are dependent on what esquires tell them to do. Right, they have really no clue what the truth is, and uh, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just bringing the truth. I don't have if I got to step on a few toes to do it. Well, stand out of the way. So what I did, right, this case is going on in uh, the United States District Court, District of Columbia. And I had known from having looked at these case, these places before that if you go up here in the search and, well, maybe I should just go back and do it. 
right, I searched under Pro Se, right, and uh, you find all these search results. And one of them was, because of the conditions we're in now, that there's the clerk is going to be working under some kind of COVID-19 operation. And sure enough, you have all these email addresses that you can send your paperwork into because, you know, can't get into the courtrooms right now. And so I said, oh, look, they got emergency judges and they got uh, criminal case filing. And, you know, if I can find the case, I'm going to write something up and try to file it in the case just to see what they do because that's what I do. I want to make them have to do something. Right? So I'm going to file something and call people all sorts of names and, uh, you know, see how the court reacts. And uh, that's what I did. So give me a second. I'll show you what I did. And then we'll get into all these other pieces of paper that go in this court case. Hang on. I guess before I move on, what I didn't do at the time, and I did just before I did this video, was I actually scrolled down farther. Duh. You know, read the whole thing instead of just stopping at the beginning. And way at the bottom, intake. Right? Motion to file under seal. Motion to proceed under pseudonym. That's interesting. You can proceed under a pseudonym. I wonder where those motions are, because they never use people's real names in court, right? This is part of the thing we're going to complain about is um, they're not using their full legal name to identify themselves. They're not using the plaintiff's uh, proper name, right? They put United States of America, which is King George's jurisdiction. And uh, they don't use the proper name of the attorneys or so forth, right? So everybody's hiding their identity. And they turn everybody into a John Doe, right? They don't use your full legal name. So they're really not coming after you because they didn't use your full legal name. Yet you're the one that gets picked up. So they're, you know, you're being, you, if this has happened to you, you're being treated like a John Doe. Ah, uh, new miscellaneous cases, general pro se filing. I said, I that's something. So I just, today, what got rejected, and I'll show you in a little bit what it was, um, back, I sent to this place today. But uh, for them to reject it, they had to put something in the docket. And really, at the time, that's all I want to do. Make, make them put an entry in the docket. And uh, let's take a look at what was going on in this court case. You know, why I would complain about such a thing. So, okay. So here's the case, right? It's 121CR00052TJK. And the TJK are the uh, initials of the judge that this case has been given to. Now, this is supposed to be grand jury was sworn in on this date, January 8th. Right? It's supposed to be an indictment against, uh, you know, Dominic Pozzola and, and his AKAs. But is, now I don't know, is Dominic Pozzola that man's full legal name or does he have, you know, a middle name or Technically, it's the second half of your given name, right? You don't really have a middle name. They want you to put it in a middle name box so that then they can tell you later to give a middle initial and you take your name away from yourself, right? So your given name, like mine's Robert Allen. That always goes in the first name box. I don't have a middle name, so therefore I cannot have a middle initial, right? So I'm sure that Dominic has, you know, another part of his name and William probably does, but that's not the names they're using, right? They're using these John Doe's. So John Doe's are being, at a, in some case, before with the United States of America, which is really not the proper, uh, you know, it's not the proper name of the, of the uh, country. There's no criminal number, you know, then they talk about these violations and so forth and so on. I really don't care about that stuff. See, this is what they want you to get upset about is all the shit they wrote about you. Except for this, right? That all of these say on or about January 6th. Well, you have all these counts, and in everything it says on or about. Well, either it happened on January 6th, or it doesn't matter as far as what they're supposedly charging you with, right? And so these are uh, illegitimate phrases or you know, illegal phrases to use in an indictment. It has to be specifically what is it they said you did and so it either happened on the 6th or it happened about the 6th but it can't happen on or about right they could say one or the other but they can't say both and they did technically i say they can only say on you got to pick the day that i was supposedly did all this shit 
Otherwise, uh, I can't defend myself. But at the very end of the indictment, look, it says a true bill and four person. And then it says United States Attorney in and for the District of Columbia. So, you know, these are all wrong. That What it should be endorsed is true bill, not a true bill. It's a true bill. You know, you can go look at black sticks in there. That's the definition. That's the word that has a definition. There's not anything in there, a true bill that has a definition, but true bill does. Right? And then the four person is supposed to sign the indictment. Well, I don't see any signature, and it's not called a true bill. And this attorney's office is not the in and for, right? There is no such office. It's just United States attorney for the uh, for the District of Columbia. You know, that's according to the website. So, you know, it's an office that doesn't exist. It wasn't signed, and uh, it's not the right document. And this is what has a man sitting in jail today, and uh, probably in the District of Columbia, right? A brother of the Proud Boys. So if I was a Proud Boy, I'd be a, a bit pissed about this, that this man's attorneys would let this happen, because, you know, he does have attorneys. Well, that was the indictment. Well, you know, it, they did it again. Now they have a uh, superseding indictment. But still, it has a true bill in four person, not done. And now it has somebody's name, Channing D. Phillips, but th that is not anybody's full legal name. And he is not the acting United States attorney in and for the District of Columbia if he's claiming that to be an office of the United States because there is no such fucking office. It's just the United States Attorney for the District of Columbia. That's an office. So, you know, I mean, it's obvious that this shit has got all sorts of errors in it. It's just um, getting the military to say, we agree with you and coming to our, you know, our aid. Right? Grand jury sworn in on or about January 11th. Well, what day was it sworn in? If you can't even tell me for sure what day it is, then I don't believe that you know. And now uh, this one has three people on it, and, uh, you know. So, I, again, I really don't care what's written in here under all these counts. I don't care. What I care about is, well, you know, it hasn't been entered into court. When you when you bring a true bill signed by the four person, well, then we can discuss what I did. But until then... The grand jury has not, you know, rendered of uh, its verdict. Okay, hang on again. I got so many different little pieces of paper to show you that, you know, they it's not all a court case. I want to kind of go through them as I think about them. But if you go to any of these federal court sites, right, you'll find something under attorney information and talk about attorney forms and so forth and so on and. Well, on this one here, I was able to find, where are you now? Well, there it is. Application. Right, United States District and Bankruptcy Courts for the District of Columbia Application for Admission. And uh, every attorney that wants to, you know, practice in this court is supposed to have filled one of these out. You know, it's got a sponsor's affidavit, a certificate of good standing. Well, I, I don't know all what it has, but here's what it has, right? And the matter of the application of. Print your name the way you wish it to appear on the records of the court. So that may be the way you want to show on the records, but what is your name that you're going to put in here? Right? Because you have a full legal name. It's the name that's on your, uh, on your birth record. Or if you have a Real ID compliant ID. It's the name on your ID because that was part of the reason for the Real ID Act was that the the identity identification card had must have your full legal name on it, or you were not going to be able to use it to get on an airplane anymore, right? To do anything federal, because the federal government wanted to deal with the full legal name, residence address, so forth and so on, and it. At the end is their oath of office. So any attorney that's involved in this case has, has to have done this. Right? And uh, so these are the things I'd be looking at in a court case because 
the name that they're going to use on these, if they're going to put their full legal name, which they have to because, you know, that's the name that they're actually licensed in, but it's not the name they're going to use on your documents. So I actually asked for these, and, they, you know, they don't want to send them to me. But you might be able to do it different if you could get to the court or uh, had a little more involved than I do in it. I just wanted to see what they say, and they don't want to give it to me. Not that they don't exist, but they haven't given it to me yet. Okay, hang on. Okay, uh, document 38. This is supposed to be an arrest warrant, right, uh, for Dominic Fazola. But, again, does Dominic have a middle name? Because I'm sure there's hundreds, if not thousands, of Dominic Pozzolas somewhere. At least a hundred. Right? Somewhere. So that's not defining exactly who you are. You couldn't use that as your identification. In fact, you know, your identification is your full legal name, but it has to be authenticated by something else, like a number, and that's what your social security number is supposed to be. It's the authenticator for which, you know, Dominic Pozzola we, we would be talking about. So chances are he's got a different name than that. So really they picked up a John Doe. And then, you know, Zia M. Faroki. Well, that's nobody's full legal name. Right? That that isn't on any that that is not on any oath of office. And this is for US magistrate judge. Well, US U dot S dot is a military abbreviation for United States. Which, you know, this is Uncle Sam in the military. So our are, is he saying that this is a military court, which is the only choice it is, or is he just a liar and uh, he doesn't want to put the proper thing on there? So they made something up. Right? And then it was signed, returned by Kevin R. Black, Special Agent, FBI. Right? Well, does Kevin R. Black have an oath of office to be a special agent for the FBI? Is there, does this person even exist, is my point. Because there is nobody with a full legal name, Kevin R. Black. You know, so that it's just, it goes on and on. Their, their paperwork has so many errors in it. It's, here's one of the other guys, right, Matthew Green. I'm sure Matthew has, you know, middle name, call it what you want. The other part of his given name. This says this is the case number. And then it has a related case. Well, now there's two different cases involved in this thing. Right? And this is uh, 121 CR. That's, you know, this case number starts with a 1. Well, this case number doesn't start with a 1. And neither does this one. So now are there three different cases involved? It's the Ring of Rosie they play. Another person using the middle initial, you saying they're a U.S. magistrate judge, U.S., U dot S dot, that's military. Right? Are you saying that this is the uh, martial law jurisdiction court, gold fringe flag court? Because they have gold fringe flags, and if anything, if they're going to be anything legit, that's what they would be, is a uh, military tribunal, like a provost court or something, that right now they're treating us like we're belligerents and they're not recognizing us as being um, protected persons under international law. Because as a veteran, right, if I was going to be tried by a military court, then I'm uh, privileged to trial by court-martial. And, you know, this isn't a court-martial court. And the interesting thing is, in the in the military, you can serve under a, an assumed name. So, you know, using the middle initial name is fine in the military. But if that isn't the thing that's on the document that made you who you say you are, then, you know, you're not using your proper name and title. And this guy just said special agent. Of what? You know. So how they get away with calling this stuff legit, I don't understand. And going to them to argue about it isn't the thing to do. So, you know, part of what I believe is we need to go to somebody else with a gold French flag and another entity. And I had did these uh, this video here just, oh, hang on a second. Yeah, I had did uh, this video here, Christian Church's wartime pledge to God, country, and flag. And if you watch that video, you will see that the War Department gave the various churches uh, a commission. 
right? And this is why when you go into church, you got a gold French flag because they were given a military commission. It wasn't given by the civil government; it was given by the you know by the military. Well, that was in uh, 1918, and what was called the Department of War then is now called the Department of Army. Uh, and they did it with the Department of Navy, too, so it was the Army and the Navy, right, that gave them these commissions. And uh, that's why, you know, there's certain uh, provisions made on military bases for, like the, uh, like, the exchange. It was run by the YMCA, which is run by the Protestant churches. Right, but they provided AFES. Right, which is the it was AFES, isn't it? Isn't that called the post exchange? So um well that power's never gone away, it's just not being used. And I've explained it all in this video. But at the same time then since then I went and I looked a little bit deeper. And I believe that uh, libraries have the same provisions made to them and I'm going to do my next video will be on that that uh, you know the library is actually part of the government it is in the government the, a li the, the people that sit on the library board are considered state officers well I didn't know that before so I'm going to be all over that next week but, you know it all led from this right here that we're going to the wrong people to try to get relief right that what we need to do is be able to put evidence into a court and evidence in a court is a sworn statement. It's not an affidavit. They keep telling people, put an affidavit. It's affidavit, affidavit. It's not an affidavit. It's a sworn statement that within it has an affidavit. What were you filing is a sworn statement, not an affidavit. Now, this affidavit I keep showing, or this sworn statement, is an Army sworn statement form. You can Google it and find it. And on there, it shows how to do it. Fill the whole thing out. You get to the end. And you're going to get to the part where somebody has to be the officer administering the oath. And it asks, you know, what their authority is. And so that's a military jurisdiction. A, you know, a notary public cannot do it. They're not, they don't have that jurisdiction. All right, that jurisdiction would be somebody with a gold fringe flag. And so if the librarian has it, I say they can do it. And certainly now because the, uh, the, um, The uh, library trustees are state officers. I say they can do it. That's what I'm going to try to convince them next week. Right? That find somebody with a gold fringe flag authority and take them a Army sworn statement for them on it with your statement and get it done, properly done. And then the United States Army will agree that's your sworn statement and it will be valid any place in the world. And that's evidence that can only be you know, superseded by uh, somebody else swearing they have, you know, other information or that, you know, what, what is wrong with your sworn statement. But they can't do that because these people are lying. So what you do is you, you know, you swear to things that are the truth that they can't rebut. And, well, then you, you end up winning. That's how it should work. Okay, hang on. And real quick, here's the word games they play, right? This is uh, the United States Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia is a unique among U.S. attorney's offices. Well, here it's a U.S. attorney office, and up here it's United States attorney's office for the District of Columbia. So it's like they've mixed these two, two jurisdictions. And wh what it doesn't say, though, is in and for the District of Columbia. It just says for. And as we saw in those uh, indictments, they were saying in and for. You know, purposely they did it. They know what they're doing. Okay, a few more to look at, like document 29, which is supposed to be a motion for admission pro hack vice of John M. Pierce, right, who says he's going into this case number here, which isn't the same as this case number here. I know it's close, but it's not the same. It doesn't start with a 1. It's not 1-21 CR 00052, 00052 TGK. Here it's in parentheses with a two, right? He put it into a different case, right? And technically, it doesn't even have the word for, right? If you look on the website, it's the United States District Court, District of Columbia, not for the. So then we, you know, we can read on about what it says he's doing, and here he's, uh, 
Oh, okay, this is supposed to be. This is a motion by somebody that uh, he's a member. A good stay in the bar of this court. So this is John, or Robert L. Jenkins, Jr., a member of the bar of this court and counsel for the defendant. Welcome to counsel for the defendant hasn't told the judge that the fucking uh, indictment and the superseding indictment aren't properly done. Not much of an attorney, right? But he's going to say John M. Pierce is a good one. Hey, come on in. Help us out, John. Another Esquire going to come in. There it is. Robert L. Jenkins, Jr. Esquire, right? Well, we saw the definition that he believes he's above a mister. And I know that that makes him a, you know, a, a crown agent. And that's who the attorneys for the defendant William Joseph Pep is. So apparently he's from a different jurisdiction. All right, this is the declaration. It's supposed to have an affidavit, but it's a declaration, right? So they didn't call it what they're supposed to. That I, John M. Pierce, certify under penalty of perjury. Well, let's just stop right there. John M. Pierce doesn't exist. So he, right, it's a pseudonym. All right, but let's go on. That I, He's the managing director of some partnership in Los Angeles and an active member in good standing of the state bar of California under this number. Well, Thanks to modern technology, we can check, track that down. And well, no, John, here you're John Mark Pierce with that number, All right? The State Bar of California. Now you can see that you know how this one is capitalized, right? Is not going to match the one that he says he's a member of. But that's just part of this Esquire controlled system, right? Where they do this stuff intentionally. They're you know, they're deceiving us. They're deceitful. Right? State, bar, California. Here's not capital S, capital B. Right? So, so it, where is this jurisdiction at? Because it has nothing to do with this jurisdiction with this number, because that jurisdiction with that number, you know, would lead you to this, the state bar of California and say that his full legal name is John Mark Pierce has the same email address. You know, so here's, uh, here's the thing. It's using the same email address as he will use on his documents. So, um, somehow they're tied together. And again, this is a, these are not even points that should be, um, adjudicated in their court in the first place. Right? These are all things that should be adjudicated in a military tribunal where he's standing for um, impersonating an officer of the United States. Right? Because if he didn't fill the proper paperwork out, then he doesn't have any authority. Even an attorney has to take an oath of office, right? If he didn't do the proper oath of office, then he's not an attorney. I don't care if he took something that looks like an oath of office. He needs to take the proper oath of office. So that's how they roll, right? This is uh, this is the deceit. The devil's in the details. And you've been told this since you were a little child, and this is how it really works. Okay, and then uh, finally, at the end, they simulate putting it in this order. It's a proposed order that upon consideration of the defendant's motion for admission, Right, John M. Pierce is hereby ordered that the motion, it is hereby ordered that the motion is granted. John M. Pierce is admitted and may appear on behalf of the defendant in the above captioned matter. But it's not been signed. All right, United States District Judge. I thought this was the United States Court, United States District Court, and the District Court would have a judge, not a United States District Judge. But I guess it's okay if that's who he is. Well, if if that's the office that is in the um, right the judicial branch of government, three branches of government, each has their own, you know, officers. So he would be a judicial officer. Well, then he needs to have taken the oath that satisfies the sixth article of the Constitution, 
which I've shown many times is the first law passed after the Constitution is ratified. It's in uh, Statutes at Large at 1 Stat 23, wherein it says this is the oath that satisfies the sixth article of the Constitution to wit, in the following form to wit, which you know means you got to do it the way you see it. I state your name, do solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States. That's the oath. Satisfy the sixth article of the Constitution. Didn't do that oath. You didn't satisfy the sixth article of the Constitution. Because the oath that these people are taking says, so help me God on it, which is a religious test, right? So it violates the Constitution. So they're not constitutional judges. So, you know, if the military isn't going to claim that they're their judges, then they must be the enemy and they need to be uh, arrested immediately. Because either they're uh, military law judges under martial law, or they're usurpers of offices, and they need to go. Okay, and so we have a chance to look at an order, because that was the proposed order. Well, let's see what order he put in. Now, William had a, you know, he had a full legal name somewhere else. Now he's back to William Pepe, right? Uh, I have to find the other document. They're actually using his full legal name in proper case, but uh, that isn't what they're doing now. But this is signed by Timothy J. Kelly, who says he's United States District Judge. Right now, you know, when you download this, it says at least one signature requires validating. Well, there's only one signature on it. So is this really the signature of that judge? Well, I say no. I say Timothy J. Kelly is not a judge of the United States. He's not an officer or employee of the United States, as Timothy J. Kelly he may be as Timothy John Kelly or whatever his name is, but he's taking this side job where he's involved in a scheme where um, they're utilizing the powers of government for private gain as Esquire's working for the Crown. It's been going on a long time. All right, and then finally we had, uh, what is this, 43, where it said uh, joint status update, defendant, Right now he's William Pep. By his attorney, John Pierce Esquire. Uh oh. Right, got Esquire at the end of his name. He's a crown agent. Crown agent, right? A proud boy has a crown agent as his defendant. I don't think it's going to work out, or as his uh, attorney. I don't think it's going to work out well. And uh, now it said this is supposed to be a joint. What did it say? Joint what? Status update. And both parties are supposed to have done this thing, right? But when you get to the bottom, it's only the United States Attorney's Office that did. There's nothing on here that shows the other party did it. All right? Where's the defendant? This is just the uh, prosecutor. On and on and on and on and on. Just every piece of paper you look at that they have, there's something wrong with it. All right? Channing Phillips, that, that's not his name. On another document, he's got a middle initial. So which way is it? And here this guy's got a middle initial. But, you know, if he's a member of this court, well, then show me on your paperwork this uh, form we were looking at. Where the hell is that thing at? No, not that. Application. Uh, right, this, go find the, his, he has to have one of these in the courtroom or in that court. Right, who's ever claiming to be this guy, assistant United States attorney, must have filed one of these into the court. So somebody who's in the Proud Boy organization, go find it. If you find it, send it to me. I'll you know, do a video on it, obviously. So, you know, like I said earlier, I, I had found these on here, so I'm going to write something and send it to the court, see if I can get it in. I'm going to call it a petition, and I'm going to complain about all this shit I'm finding on this paperwork, right, just to see what they would do. And uh, I finally got an answer, right? It's number 44. So, you know, you're a proud boy following this court case, right? Item 44, where it says uh, the following, uh, leave to file denied, Docket text, leave the file denied. Verified petition for redress of grievances as to Dominic Pozzola, William Joseph Pepe, and Matthew Green. This document is unavailable as the court denied its filing. 
Leave to file denied. The caption case is a criminal case, and the individual has no right to file a document in this matter. Signed by Judge Timothy J. Kelly. Right, that was his reason, that because it's cash, it was a criminal case, that I had no right to file a document into the matter. Well, now, I know that isn't true because I filed other documents in the court cases. So it's like, well, that's, you know, silly. Of course I can. They weren't my, my court cases either. I just filed them in. I just, you know, filed paperwork. So, you know, that's what they said. But now I'll show you what I put in. And, uh, like I said, at the time when I did this, I didn't, I hadn't gone down to the bottom where it said this part here. So I just filed the same thing I'm going to show you again to this email address. And we'll see what they say on Monday. And the intake, duh, intake. Makes a lot of sense. And I emailed this place here just so I can say I did. At attorney admissions asking for the applications of um, the attorney's, you know, names I had found in some documents. I said, here's this document. I want to see these attorneys. You know, applications, and they don't want to send them to me. Okay, so anyways, this is what I filed. On 427, and what's today? Right, 5-1, so it didn't take long, three days. All right, uh, Staff Sergeant Robert Allen Witluski, of course, never a mister. United States Army veteran, yeah, use your Social Security number. That ties you together. That puts you back in the military because that's what they used to put you in, your name and your Social Security number. Now, out of that, they ended up giving you a DOD ID number, but that, th that record has errors in it too. All right, but what I know for sure is, well, what my name is and what my Social Security number is. So, like I said, they had email address to the emergency judges, so I had written it to them. United States District Court, District of Columbia. RE, usurpation of office, simulation of legal process, and violation of the Constitution of the United States. Emergency judges, uh, the case we're talking about ongoing at the United States District Court, District of Columbia, is a simulated legal process orchestrated by esquires impersonated as United States Attorney for the District of Columbia. That deprives the alleged defendants of life, liberty, or property without due process of law in offense of Amendment V, that'd be the Fifth Amendment, to the Constitution of the United States. Where in Amendment V, it says that no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment of an indictment of a grand jury. Well, they didn't do that. So since they didn't do that, then um, are they saying that it arises under land and naval forces, in the militia, when in actual service in a time of war or public danger? Is that how they're getting away with it? <laughs> Nor shall a person be subject to the same offense uh, to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb. But each of these persons have two court cases against them. And they did the same thing to General Flynn. And they do it to everybody. Every, every criminal case, when you go look at Put the person's name into, you know, the search and pacer and look at it. There'll be two court cases, which is all the same court case, except one will have dash one at the end. And the first one will be USA versus them and their last name. And the second one will just have their name in there. I have to find an example to show you. Anyways, that'd be in a minute. So utilizing PACER to search for review of the various documents, which I just showed you, filed in the case, the petitioner has verified that the indi indictment filed is document 12 on 1-8-2021. I, I, not on or about, I know what day it was done on. And the first superseding indictment filed on do as document 34 on 4 2021 were not signed by the foreperson and were endorsed a true bill which is a simulation of the phrase true bill required to be endorsed on a bill of indictment and signed by the grand jury foreman. Bouvier's Law Dictionary 1856 edition defines a true bill as, right, these words are endorsed on a bill of indictment. It doesn't say a true bill, it's true bill. When a grand jury, <laughs> after having heard the witnesses for the government, are of the opinion that there is sufficient cause to put the defendant to trial. Well, apparently they didn't agree because they didn't put true bill and the former didn't sign it. 
Ah, these bad faith filings simulate a bill of indictment and cannot be construed as an indictment of a grand jury required under Amendment V of the Constitution of the United States. Document 12 was subscribed by an individual claiming to be Channing D. Phillips, acting United States Attorney in and for the District of Columbia, while Document 34 was subscribed with the mark of someone claiming to be a United States Attorney in and for the District of Columbia. Said marks appear to be of Michael R. Sherwin with some kind of scribble. See, we got Channing D. Phillips, right? That's uh, his scribble. And then we have uh, Michael R. Sherwin and his scribble. Both say they're in and for, right? <coughs> Excuse me, in and for. And, well, that just does not exist. It's not the proper office. Take notice, emergency judges, that there is no such office in the government of the United States with the title of the United States Attorney in and for the District of Columbia, acting or otherwise. And the United States does not recognize the use of initials in place of names when a name is used for identification of an individual for official purposes with the United States government. See the Real ID Act. Under the laws of war, their concealment of their full legal name is the act of a spy. The subscribers are concealing their true identity while pretending to be an officer or employee of the United States in order to usurp the authority of an office of an executive branch of the United States as part of an effort to coerce the civilian population of the United States and influence the policy or affect the conduct of the United States government by coercion. That little phrase there, that's the definition of uh, a certified um, act of terrorism. Right? Any act that uh, uh, coerces the civilian population of the United States and influences the policy or effect of the conduct of the United States governed by coercion, if it's certified by the uh, Secretary of Treasury, then you can collect on their on liability insurance, on your liability insurance, right? Not on theirs, on yours. But it has to be certified and, you know, and so if you remember back, Trump called them acts of terrorism that was happening with uh, everything that happened in Minnesota and these other places. And so did uh, uh, the Attorney General Barr at the time. But the, uh, the one that has to do it for you to be able to collect on your insurance, if you have liability insurance, is the uh, um, Secretary of Treasury. As far as I know, he didn't do it. Anyways, back to this. So the usurpers have even concealed the full legal name of the alleged defendants and appear to be using numerous Esquire conspirators to act as legal counsel for John Doe defendants. The simple fact that the alleged attorney of record in this matter is not objected to these false indictments as proof of collusion with enemies of the United States impersonated as officers of the United States. Petitioner prays the emergency judges do their duty to God and country and this malicious prosecution of patriots this day and see to their relief, then have the usurpers arrested. I verify under penalty of perjury the foregoing to be true and correct. All right, so that's what I filed. And, you know, it was an interesting couple of days because I filed it. And I got an email back that said that uh, they were going to send it to the uh, judges' chambers for consideration. And I waited for a day and I said, look, but, you know, it's not the judge's decision. I want you to file this damn thing. Well, finally, on Friday, not that it was that long, because you know Friday was the 29th, and I put it on 27th, so it didn't take all that long to get them to finally say right, uh, lead to files denied. Verify petition for redress of grievances as to Dominic Pozzola, William Joseph Pepe, and Matthew Green. This document is unable or unavailable as the court denied its filing. Leave to file denied. The caption case is a criminal case, and this individual has no, that would be me, by the way, has no right to file a document. This matter. Well, I disagree. I just didn't file it into the right office, maybe. So this is why I said, oh, I'm going to take the same thing, and I file it in the intake and see what they have to say. Okay, well, that's what's going on in America this weekend, right? In case you didn't know, you thought everything was honky dory and uh, 
you know, the courts are doing a good job. If you need more evidence that they're not, here you are, right? Or go watch this other, like I said, this other video I just put up here recently. This uh, Newport News is an alien enemy belligerent. Or you can look at Governor Alien Unprivileged Belligerent. Or City of Detroit Police, Chief versus Talib, To find out that things aren't honky-dory in the United States. There's all sorts of errors. But the ones that we need to go to to get them cor um, corrected have gold fringe flags. And just because the one you're going to with a gold fringe flag won't give you justice doesn't mean another one won't because all the gold fringe flags make up their own jurisdiction. Right? We've been under martial law since 1861, well, maybe 1863. But once it was declared over the United States by President Lincoln, it's, it's still going. And it says in the Lieber Code, which came out in 1863, that martial law does not end until there's a peace treaty or a uh, special proclamation, neither of which has happened. And we're still under it. So that put us under martial law domestically. And then you could say we went under martial law internationally under World War I because it, the same as uh, the Civil War, ended in an armistice. It did not end with a peace treaty. And in both cases, martial law was declared. Went under an emergency. Right? And so it still exists. And so, you know, we, as especially veterans, we need to find out how to get the military to, you know, come to our aid. Because so like I said, that, uh, so if you're going to court for any reason, you need to tell them that you're a veteran. If you're a veteran, tell them you're a veteran. Tell these guys, I'm a veteran. I demand trial by court martial. Right? This is the wrong venue. Right? That's, you know, a uh, Hail Mary thing to do, but do it in open court and you know, if you're going to do, say it once, say it three times. Right? You can accept the judge's oath. This is the other thing. You can say, uh, judge, I accept your oath. I bind you to it. Remind you of a fiduciary duty. I'm going to tell you that three times, judge, just so we can get it over with. Right? So they, I know that you heard what I said. So for the second time, judge, I accept your oath. I bind you to it. And I remind you, you have a fiduciary duty. And for the third time, for God and country, judge, I tell you that I accept your oath. I bind you to it. And remind you of a duty. To God and country. A fiduciary duty. I like God and country almost better now as I've thought about it over time. Right? And so you need to protect me. Right? I'm a veteran. I demand trial by court martial. So I've done something wrong. I demand trial by court martial. Right? That this is the wrong venue. I'm a, I'm a protected person under international law because we're, we're under the laws of war right now. So you're a protected person under international law, which, you know, that's the Geneva Convention. But this shit's all spelled out in the DOD's Law of War Manual, right? Chapter 4 is all about protected persons. And so what we need to do is say, look, you got a gold French flag. This is a military tribunal. Or you people are just usurpers, you know, from England, and you're all going to have to be arrested. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm just, you know, quit, quit acting like, there's any Esquire that's working for you because they're not. They're working for the crown. They took an oath that, uh, you know, they gave up their um, sovereignty in the United States because they're, you know, they, they freely join an association who advocates the overthrow of our constitutional form of government because it makes its members give up their <laughs> First Amendment right to Free speech. And nothing else needs to be said. There is, no, there is nothing else, right? If one little part's wrong, the whole thing's wrong. And so they're wrong. W-R-O-N-G, wrong. All righty now then. And uh, just so that everybody remembers, you should go look at this one more time, right? That uh, Esquires are not patriots. They're crown agent belligerents. And in their nation, a mister is lower than an esquire. In the 19th century and earlier in Britain, two graduations of gentlemen were recognized. The hire was entitled to the use esquire, usually abbreviated ESQ, and I think we've seen some of those, which followed the name. Yep, that's what we saw. And the lower employed mister before the name. Today on post from Buckingham Palace, a man who is a U.K. citizen 
is addressed as an Esquire or ESQ. That's interesting. They don't even say Esquire. Is addressed as Esquire or <laughs> is addressed as ESQ. And a man of foreign nationality is addressed as Mr. And when you get mail, it has Mr. at the beginning of your name. And when they get mail, it has Esquire at the end of their name or ESQ. And that means everything, people. Right? We're, we're in a foreign jurisdiction. We need to get out of it. And uh, we need to tell the Army this is what's happening. And they have a duty to come protect the United States. And that's you. Okay. Have a good day now. See ya.